The period between Pesach and Shuas, Tesai, Nisan, until Chag Shuas, a very special time. It's a time that we count the Eimer. Every day we count the Eimer. It's a very special time. But also, it was, in a perplexing way, a, a tragic time. As we know, it was a time when the Talmidim of Rabbi Akiva were nifter. The 12,000 pairs of Talmidim of Rabbi Akiva were nifter during this period of time. So it was a sad time as well, which is very perplexing for a number of reasons. For a number of reasons. Number one, we know that Rabbi Akiva, Omar Rabbi Akiva, Vahavta Lereacha Kamocha Zeklal Godel Betayra. Rabbi Akiva was the one that stressed that we have to have ahava between bein adam lechaveira vahavta lereyacha kamoicha is a klal gadol b'tayr. We know that Rabbi Akiva had sterling midas. We know that his avoda bein adam lechaveira was an ikar part of his avoda. The Gemara in Ksuvas and Daf Samach Beis and Taisus points out over there and discusses it shows the great Midas of Rabbi Akiva. There's a Gemara in Shabbos, Dav Kuf Chof Zayin, that talks about a Maisa with an Odom Echad. An Odom Echad that was exemplified how to dan as Chaver L'Chavzchus. That even though he worked for a long period of time and he wasn't paid on time, and he suffered greatly with it. And the circumstances seemed to indicate that his employer was mistreating him and stealing from him. He did not suspect him of any wrong, wrongdoing. And the Shilta says that who was this Adam Echad, this individual? Who was this Adam Echad? There was none other than Rabbi Akiva before he became Rabbi Akiva. So even before he became the great Rabbi Akiva, he had sterling midas, bein adam lechaveire. And Astasis and Ksuvas also points out that even before he became the great Rabbi Akiva, he exemplified bein adam lechaveire. So how is it that Davka, in the base madrash of Rabbi Akiva, v'hafta l'reyacha kamoycha zeklal gadol b'tayra, Davka, his Talmidim, in his base madrash were nichshal and sinas chinam. That was his talmidim that were nichshal and sinas chinam, which brought about this tragedy. And how is it, and why is it that it's specifically dafka in this special period of time between Pesach and Shuas that this occurred? The Ramban says that the days of Cholamoyed are sandwiched between Yontav at the beginning and Yontav at the end. Those days are special days of Cholamoyed. They have Kedusha. He says the days of Sviras HaOimer are like a Bechina of Cholamoyed. They're special days with Kedusha. They're sandwiched between Yontav, Pesach at one end and Shuas at the other end. And the Shiva Shavuos. And he describes it like the days of Cholamoid between the first day of Sukkot and Shmini Atzeres. And you have the seven weeks, and after the seven days of Sukkot, of Shmini Atzeres. Here you have the seven weeks, and after the seven weeks of counting of the Aimer, you have Shuas, which the Torah calls Atzeres. Just like the days seven days leading up to Atzeres, Shmini Atzeres, you have the seven weeks that lead up to Atzeres, Shuas, which is called Atzeres. So the Ramban says that these days of Sviras Aimer are very special, special times, a Bechina of Cholamoid, which have Kedusha. So why Davka, the Talmidim of Rabbi Kiva, were Nechshel in this Avera, and they were taken in this special Tkufa of the Yemei Sviras HaOimer. 
there is a morale. The morale says, discussing on Shuas, the mitzvah shtei halechem. And he points out that it's very unusual because the menachos come from matzah. They're made from matzah, not chometz. But the shtei halechem of Shuas are chometz. And why is that so? Why is this different than all the menachas? Why does it come chometz? Dr. Maharal, he says, because chometz is representative of the Yetzir Hara. And it is to indicate how special the day of Shuas is. Whoever is greater than his friend is the Yetzir Hara is greater as well. The higher the person is, the Yetzir Hara wages a greater battle. And we see from this morale a very important say that it's so not only by people, not only the greater the person, the greater the Yetzir Hara, but it applies to a time period as well. The greater the time period. The day of Matan Taira, the Sultan is out in full force. He's out in full force to be Machshel, to be Machshel Klal Yisrael. The Sultan is out in full force. And that's why we bring the Shtei Alechem from Chometz to show that the Yetzir Hara is there. And we battle, we battle the Yetzir Hara. We battle the Yetzir Hara. We battle with, with Korbonas, with Menachs, with Tfilas, with Taira. Kol Agodol Mechavera, Yitzir Agodol Mechavera. And a time period that's greater than other time periods, there's more of a Yetzir Hara, the Sultan is out. And perhaps we can add that in a mitzah that's greater, in a greater the mitzah, the more important it is, the Yetzir Hara is there to be makshalas. He comes out in full force to be makshalas with a greater mitzah. So we had the great Rabbi Akiva, who exemplified the Midas and the Midas Bein Adam L'Chaveri. And we had his great Talmidim. And the great mitzvah, Vahavta L'Reacha Kamaycha. In this great time period, this period of Kedusha, of Yemei Svira Sa'ime. And there the Sultan wages the battle in full force. And Davka, the Talmidim of Rabbi Kiva, that's where he waged the battle with full force. Davka in that base matters. And Davka at that period of time they were taken. Because that's where the battle, that's where the battle rages. The greater the people, the people who working harder on a particular mitzvah, the greater the mitzvah, the greater the time, the greater the battle. And unfortunately, they were taken at that time. And that's a lesson to be learned. That whenever we have a great mitzvah, whenever we have something that is so important, and it's incumbent upon us, and we try, and we put our efforts, and we're succeeding, we should never be complacent. And don't pat ourselves on the back, because... As we're succeeding, and the more we're succeeding, the more the Sultan now is preparing for war, the more the Yetzir Hara is preparing for battle. And we have to be on guard, and we have to have our guard up, because it's there where the battle rages. To illustrate this, I want to share with you a Misa several years ago. Several years ago, I had the great schus to host Rav Simcha Walsam and Zatzal. And I used to help him from time to time with his yeshiva. He was building his yeshiva in Eretz Yisrael, or Ochanan in Eretz Yisrael. Rav Ochanan, named after his father, Rav Ochanan. Rav Simcha, throughout his life, throughout his life, built yeshivas in France, in America, all over America, and at the last stage of his life in Eretz Yisrael, he was 
an elderly person at that time. He was well into his 80s and 90s, and he was, would go around and collect money tirelessly, building that yeshiva, oral chon and Eretz Yisrael, and it is what it is today, L'shem L'seferis. So one time he asked me to go to a certain gavir. He came to Toronto, and he asked me to accompany him and accompany him to approach a certain gavir in Toronto. Now, there was a pledge, a pledge that was made to the yeshiva. But there was a couple of years went by, and uh, no money was remitted. So we wanted to pay him a visit, see how he is, see if there's any problem, and see if the pledge could be honored. So we had an appointment. We went to this Gvir's office. It was in the outskirts of the city. It was quite a distance. We went there. We went to the reception, and we announced ourselves. We had an appointment and said, please have a seat and wait. And we did, and we waited, and we waited, and 10 minutes went by, 20 minutes went by, half hour went by, and they kept reassuring us, don't worry, he's going to come out soon. And time, more time went by, and we, I was getting a little anxious and impatient. And they kept reassuring, don't worry, he's going to come out soon. An hour passed, and I was, felt this was not covered at all. Simcha, Simcha Zatal, Simcha was there waiting. We were waiting there. He was an elderly man, Choshev Rosh Hashiva. Very Choshev Rosh Hashiva, the son of Rebel Khanan, were waiting and waiting. And I was getting anxious. More time went by. Finally, it was an hour and a half. We waited for an hour and a half. And all this time, while I was getting anxious, Rav Simcha was calm and relaxed and seemed to be unfazed, not bothered at all. Finally, the Kavir comes out and he sits down and we talk and it's friendly, etc. And joking and friendly and then we bring up the matter of the pledge and he looks at us and he says well you know my business is not what it used to be you know my business is down I can't give any money to the yeshiva right now that was the end of the meeting we walked away after traveling back and forth and waiting after a few hours empty handed and I was, I was a young man at the time and uh, quite dejected and Simcha was totally calm and relaxed. And he said to me, he said to me, David, you should always remember something. The greatest hano that people can get in Oilam Haza, the greatest enjoyment that they can get in this world is the enjoyment they have from one another, from the Yadidas, from closeness, from friendship, from being good and kind to each other and having a close connection with each other, a meaningful close connection with each other. That's the greatest enjoyment that people can get in this world. And that's where the Yetzir Hara wages the biggest battle. And Davka there is where he tries to sow machloikis and to try to sow sinna and machloikis and tarumas and tainas. Always be aware of that. The is such a great mitzvah. And that's where the Satan, that's where the Satan puts all his effort into trying to create machloikis and sinas chinam. So we always have to be on guard. And the Rabbi Shalom should help that we should be zaychem to have avas chinam and have that great ava when the Rabbi Shalom will redeem us and we'll be able to bring the Aymer into the base of Migdash.